Hi, and thanks again for joining me on Sealed for Good. Today I'm talking about crystallization products or crystalline products that can be integrated into a concrete structure as a waterproof system versus a membrane system, a traditional membrane system. Now I've had a lot of experience with these products over the years and like anything, it depends on how they're installed and how they're actually integrated into the concrete. But for those of you who are not familiar with it, a crystallization process normally with some of the big brands out there will be batched at the concrete plant, meaning that the additive will be put into the, the batch plant, at the batch plant with the concrete, the concrete gets delivered to site, it's already got the additive in there, and when it gets poured, that concrete has different properties than standard concrete in terms of waterproof properties. And they do work, they do create a waterproof property to the concrete. My only issue with that is if you get any thermal movement or you get cracks in the concrete, even though many of them will tell you that they can handle hairline cracks, the fact is what is a hairline crack to this guy versus that guy, it varies. And hence, a lot of the time we've seen these systems work really well where they're used as a second line of defense with a traditional membrane system, or the other way around if you want to look at it that way. But it's important with crystallization that if it's from the batch plant, then that should be signed off someone that's got a quality control assessment that, that's been done properly, it gets poured on site. If you are applying the crystallization products on a building site, that's where you need to be extra careful that you are doing it to the specification. And it's not even the application of the product, it's actually the preparation of the surface that you need to be very, very uh, aware of to ensure that it gets the right absorption into that concrete substrate so it works. The thing for me is when, and I want to talk a little bit about this, when you are putting a liquid membrane, or even a sheet membrane, but more so let's go with a liquid membrane on top of concrete surfaces that have had a crystallization product applied to it, check the substrate, okay? A lot of times people do a water droplet test and they go, okay, I can see that it's not absorbing water in quickly, it's dense, it's waterproof, and I'll go and put a, perhaps an epoxy type primer on there or a cementitious slurry primer before putting their membrane down. The thing is, you need to check the substrate itself. I remember a long time ago in Sydney there was a project many, many years ago, it was a roof project that used an additive at the batch plant. Depending on the, on the conditions of when that concrete was laid, it, there was a latent that was formed afterwards with the release water that sort of rose to the top. And the contractor had done all the water droplet tests, signed off on it, put an epoxy primer down, and then everything peeled afterwards and actually layers, very fine layers of the concrete came up with the membrane real easy. And when you actually did a tap test on the concrete, it was a very weak structure at the top of it. And it needed to be ground back before they started. Now, yeah, our data sheets state that, but again, how many are reading the data sheets before you apply it? So check the condition of the concrete, not just the water absorption, where you do a water droplet test, but check what the substrate is like in terms of its integral surface. You can give the tap test. In random areas, if you suspect anything is drummy, then you need to grind it back and ensure that the surface is sound and solid. If in doubt, ask your client what product was used there, what crystallization system has been used, and you can even talk to the manufacturers because they can help guide you along that if it's been specified that you're putting a membrane on top of those surfaces. If it's a vertical surface like a wall, you need to treat it the same way and ensure that what you're going to be putting on top of that will bond and remember, if it's had a crystallization product in there, the absorption of your membrane will slow down because it's more, uh, it's less absorbent to water because of the waterproof properties of the crystallization system. So ensure you're using the right products that can handle that, a la the primer or the membrane, or be aware that those things might take longer to dry. If you are doing it on a roof system and you're concerned about the drying or the absorption, you've got the Express if you want it. So remember, you can use that, and we can help you with those specifications as well. Any questions on how you integrate the grip set systems with a crystallization product, please throw them our way. We're here to help you. And don't forget to subscribe. I want to see more of you sharing this one around to the other applicators out in the marketplace. We'll see you next time.